Let's apply all the factors we've discussed by using two specific examples of chemical synthesis. The first process is the Haber process, which produces ammonia from using nitrogen and hydrogen gas, as you can see by this chemical equation. The Haber process is very relevant to our discussion because ammonia is an essential ingredient of fertilizers, which makes up 80% of its usage globally. Although it is also used in textiles and various forms of explosives, the reason why it is still commonly produced using the Haber process is due to its high demand in agriculture. The Haber process is also a very economical way of producing ammonia due to the usage of nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas as these two are elementary forms of the two elements. So therefore they are very abundant and easily accessible. In the production of ammonia, any unused gas of nitrogen or hydrogen can be recycled and reused to produce even greater amounts of ammonia. This again increases the economical aspect of the process. Since the Haber process only produces ammonia from the two gases, the final product is usually of high purity and there's no production of any direct waste. So we are minimizing the environmental consequences the chemical process can have. The Haber process is a very good example to demonstrate how we can use various reaction conditions to optimize the chemical synthesis process of ammonia. As for the reaction rate of the Haber process, an ion-based catalyst is usually used to allow for a faster reaction rate at a lower temperature. This not only increases the rate of the reaction, but also minimizes the amount of energy that's required for the reaction. A higher pressure is also utilized to increase the collision rate between the molecules as the Haber process involves gases. A higher temperature is also used to increase the kinetic energy of the reaction and that in turn increases the collision rate as well as the reaction rate of the reaction. The yield of ammonia in the Haber process can be increased through a few ways. The Haber process is an exothermic chemical reaction and as we discussed earlier, if we want to increase the yield of the product of an exothermic reaction, we want to reduce the temperature. However, if we reduce the temperature, this will negatively affect the reaction rates. So we have to strike a balance and find a compromise between low temperature and high temperature so that not only do we have decent yield of ammonia, we also have a decent reaction rate. Therefore, a moderate temperature is usually utilized for the Haber process. Since the reaction of producing ammonia is an exothermic process, the amount of energy that's been produced can be also reused to increase the reaction rate. This reduces the amount of external energy we have to invest in the reaction and therefore makes the process more economical. In the Haber process, there are more gases on the reactant side. So there are four gases on the reactant side and two gases on the product side. Thus, if we increase the pressure of the system, this will shift the equilibrium towards the product side, which is less gases. So this is the ammonia side. And by doing so, we have increased the yield of ammonia. In addition to pressure and temperature, the Haber process is usually conducted with a constant supply of nitrogen and hydrogen and a constant removal of ammonia as it's been produced. Both of these considerations will constantly shift the equilibrium of the reaction to the right side to further increase the yield of ammonia. In this graph on the right hand side, we can see the effect of temperature and pressure on the percentage of ammonia that is the yield of the Haber process. At a lower temperature, 200 degrees Celsius, the amount of ammonia being produced is maximized. However, it's good to keep in mind that this is at the expense of a lower reaction rate. As for pressure, the yield of ammonia is increased when the pressure is increased. Okay, so the next process we'll look at is a contact process. And this chemical process involves the production of concentrated sulfuric acid by using raw materials such as sulfur and oxygen. Here's the structure of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is a very important reagent that we use in a variety of different applications. The primary use is again fertilizer, similar to the ammonia that we produce in the Haber process. However, in addition, sulfuric acids are also used as catalysts in various types of chemical synthesis, two of which we've looked at in the organic chemistry module, which are dehydration and esterification. Sulfuric acids are also used in the production of anionic detergents, specifically the detergents that have a sulfate head, as shown in this diagram here. And finally, various types of pigments also contain sulfuric acid. 
The contact process is not as straightforward as the Haber process because it is divided into four steps. The first step is a combination between sulfur and oxygen to form sulfur dioxide gas. This sulfur dioxide gas further reacts with the oxygen gas in a reversible reaction to produce sulfur trioxide. In the third step, the sulfur trioxide reacts with an existing amount of sulfuric acid to produce a chemical which we call oleum. And in the last step, the oleum will react with an abundant amount of water to form a large amount of sulfuric acid that's highly pure and concentrated. We will now look at these four reaction steps in a more diagrammatic way. In the very first reaction, which takes it in a furnace, the sulfur is heated and reacts with the oxygen that is supplied from surrounding air. In this particular step, it is important to make sure that the sulfur is readily accessible as we need an abundant amount to mass produce the sulfuric acid. The sulfur dioxide that is produced in the first reaction then reacts with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. This takes place in a second reaction chamber that uses vanadium 5 oxide as a catalyst. This catalyst is important as it accelerates the reaction and allows a faster reaction to take place at a lower temperature. We'll talk more about this particular step in the very next slide. The sulfur trioxide is produced from the converter is then pumped into a third chamber whereby it reacts with an existing amount of sulfuric acid. And in this step, we are producing a chemical called oleum, H2S2O7. In this particular step, as we are using a concentrated acid as one of our reactants, we need to ensure that this is not only just accessible, but it can be transferred very safely to where the reaction is taking place. In this particular reaction, there could be waste gas products being produced, which means we need to also ensure that the waste gases must be appropriately managed and discarded to minimize any environmental consequences. In the final step, the reaction between oleum and water produces our final product, sulfuric acid. The final product is what will be sold on the market. So again, we have to ensure that the sulfuric acid can be transferred safely and to the market that's close by to minimize any transportation cost and improve the economic aspect of this chemical synthesis process. In general, the contact process can be conducted at a high temperature and high pressure to increase the reaction rate. However, this is quite different for the second reaction of the contact process, where sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen gas in an equilibrium reaction to produce sulfur trioxide. This reaction is also exothermic, as shown by its negative enthalpy change. As we said earlier, a vanadium 5 oxide catalyst is used to allow for faster reactions to take place at a lower temperature. And this ends up saving us energy and making the reaction more economical. In addition to saving energy, when we are able to use a lower temperature, this also favors this reaction as it is exothermic. By lowering the temperature, we can shift the equilibrium position to the product side and further increase the yield of sulfur trioxide produced. This is why in this particular step, we are using a moderate temperature, the temperature that's not too high, nor is it too low. And this allows for a compromise to be made between decent reaction rates and also providing enough yield of sulfur trioxide. A high temperature setting is also utilized in this step as there are less gases on the product side compared to the reactant side. So when the pressure of the system is increased, according to Lachette's principle, the position of the equilibrium will again shift towards the right side to produce less gas molecules in order to reduce the pressure of the system. As a result of this movement of equilibrium, we again increase the yield or the amount of sulfur trioxide produced. And this is why a high pressure gives us a high yield of sulfur trioxide. To make the reaction even more economical, as it is exothermic, the energy that's produced can be reused to generate electricity, which can then be in turn to use to power the production process of producing sulfuric acid. 